Hey guys, and welcome back to more Professor Layton vs. Ace Attorney. We are about to have a turnabout moment, obviously, since uh, the final verdict was about to go off, but, you know, this ain't a Phoenix Wright game without Phoenix Wright objecting to that. So, we're going to go ahead and approve a point again that Espella is definitely not the person, is not Fizella, and also get that contraption to work, because, uh, like I mentioned in the last video, if you noticed on her arm, she still has the uh, pendant. We thought that the pendant that was in our possession was hers, but obviously it was not. So we don't know where that pendant came from, but as far as I'm aware, there are two. <laughs> What's that, Defender? It's too early to pass the final judgment on Espella. What? Explain yourself. You said earlier that the trial has reached its conclusion. But! There's something we have yet to examine! What are you suggesting? Do you mean to say you have some new evidence? Uh... But, but surely there can't possibly be any new evidence at this late stage. You don't know, Phoenix, right? There will always be evidence. As no matter how far into the case we are. <laughs> Very well, Defender. We shall play along with you just one more time. Now, show us this evidence that we haven't yet seen. The new crucial piece of evidence is... Honest Spella's person. There's only one place where it can be. It's in Espella's possession. I... I have it. I saw it for a second. Something there that she shouldn't have. An item that contradicts what we've heard. My gut feeling tells me that item is the key to this whole case. Most interesting. I shall enjoy watching you hopelessly struggle through this, like a fish caught in a net. Now, Defendor... Show us this new evidence that the accused supposedly has in her possession. Jeez, the magnifying glass is already on it for me. Got it. Boom! Why do you have that, Espella? Can I see the bracelet on your left hand? Um, yes, certainly, if you'd like. It's actually a pendant, you know. But the strap got torn somehow when I was up in the bell tower. That's why I've had it around my wrist since, well, just before this trial started. Uh, but this pendant, it looks exactly the same as the one we already have here. Wait a minute, what's all this? We confiscated her pendant at the crime scene. Wh why is she wearing it now? I don't get it! It's giving me a headache! Why are there two of them? And which- where does this other pendant belong to? So I was right. I have another question- I have another question about this pendant. Espella, do you remember when exactly the strap broke? I'm trying to remember, but... No, I can't. I know it was still fine when we parted ways, but... In other words, she has no memory of it. She doesn't remember when it broke or when she tied it to her wrist. That's certainly bizarre, I must say. Your pendant has already been submitted as evidence. Objection! And yet Espella still has her pendant. That's a fact we can all attest to, which means... There must have been two pendants to begin with. R really? Objection! So there are two, and the accused was caught red-handed at the crime scene. Whether this pendant is hers or not, it doesn't change anything. Y yeah She was caught red-handed by us, the vigilantes! This pendant proves something crucial to this case. It can't be more crucial than us catching her at the crime scene! The second pendant wasn't dropped by Espella. So, as the defense already suggested, 
One more person was at the crime scene. Whoa! It's like a... It's like a domino effect with them! <laughs> order! Order! Accuse! Submit your pendant as evidence this instant! Yes, my lord. Um, Nick. If we have two pendants to work with, maybe we can see if that strange contraption will work this time. Now it makes sense. That must be why it didn't work before. Your Honor, the defense would like to try operating the mechanism in the bell tower one more time. What? Why now? The contraption didn't work before because we only had one pendant. But both pendants are needed to operate it properly. Foolishness! Try as many times as you like! It's no use! Hi, Inquisitor Dakla! You know this is a waste of time! If it's not going to work anyway, why not let the Defender see for himself? What? Defender, if you think you can operate the contraption with two pendants... Then I suggest you go ahead and try it. Unless it has already dawned upon you that it's such a plan is futile. Rubble, rubble, rubble. The defense shall be given one more chance to verify its theory about the adformation contraption. Let us now make our way to the bell tower. This is going to be your last try. I know. If you are not terrified, the life of the accused... Are you not terrified? The life of the accused rests in your shaky hands. We won't be having any more let me try again, please, your honors. Besides, you must be aware that this puzzle may well be unsolvable. I wouldn't have been able to solve a puzzle like this before arriving here in Labyrinthia. But now, I'm sure I can take on any puzzle. It's all thanks to you, Professor. You taught me that every puzzle has a solution. I have everything I need now. What do you say, Maya? Should we hurry up and get started? Sure thing! It's a puzzle bust- It's puzzle busting time! Let's do this! Round two! I don't have to read that again. All right, let's get this started. All right, so start with that one. Your Honor, there is a clear contradiction in this puzzle. This ace attorney just aced this puzzle. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> Success! I'm sure I did it right. Um, nothing's happening. <gasps> that is a very unpleasant sound. This... the sound. That's so cool. Th this is... What an astounding contraption. Hmm, what do we have here? It's still no comparison to the comparable... Incomparable astoundness of Mother Nature. Ooh, I'd like to climb up those stairs. I'd like being on the top. We shall escort you! I am gonna take. Wait, I'm gonna take. what? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> okay, Nick. Let's go see what's upstairs. Nick, isn't this bell? Yeah, I think you're right. 
That's the bell that was taken from underground. The bell of ruin. The bell that must not be sounded. Uh, Nick! There's someone hiding behind the bell! Ah. Uh. Oh. It's you! Now that's the last person I expected to find here. Miss Kira. Oh boy, well this will be interesting. Let's bring a supposedly dead person into the courtroom now. To be continued! Oh, bless the plot thickens. I believe we're heading now over to the, uh... uh professor? Yes, I want to save. Yeah, well, here we go. It's so quiet in here. There's not a sound to be heard. Let's be very careful though, Luke. The puzzle we just dealt with is not necessarily the only one in place here. Right you are, Professor! Let's proceed with caution. Alright! Okay, well, I wanted to go back to the trial because holy shit, but I guess we do have to go back to Mr. Layton. Anyway, hinge coin time, right? Right, right. Finding hit coins, yes. That's three hit coins. Let's check out this cave, which is a puzzle. Of course it's a puzzle. Is this what I think it is? It looks like a lift. Indeed it does. It looks a lot like the kind of lift that with which we are well acquainted. But we haven't seen anything else like this since we've arrived in Labyrinthia. Yes, quite. In truth, I didn't think machinery of this sort existed here. I wonder what it's using... I wonder what it's using as a source of power. Well, since there seems to be no other way up, does that mean we get to ride it? Indeed, that would seem the most logical course of action. I must say, I find the presence of such a device most intriguing. But we can't stand around pondering such things now. There will be a time for that later. Onward and upwards, my boy. Right then, let's go! I know I keep saying this, Luke, but bear in mind that we must proceed with caution. I'm with you on that, Professor! I think I'm going to go through several puzzles without any way to stop, but like, it just automatically happens. Professor, we've stopped! What's going on here? Are we trapped? No, I don't believe so, Luke. Although I do get the feeling that something is about to happen. Something, Professor? What do you mean by something? Luke, stand close to me. Oh, okay! Puzzle number one! A stone statue stands before you. Beneath it lies a panel with what appears to have... What, what appears to have once been a crest of some kind, now at a joint, disjointed mess. Move the panels by touching the arrows that connect them, and rearrange the pieces so that the crest is correctly displayed. Alright, so, we're trying to make that thing up on the top, so let's see what we can do here. Oops. That's not what I meant to do. Uh, I totally know how to do this. Uh, why is it not letting me, like, do this? Uh... Why can't I move this thing? I think I fucked up again, too. God damn it. I'm sorry, it's not responding to me, and I'm trying to, like... right yes oh my god 
That thing's cool, though. I've already seen the answer. Ah, the joy of solving puzzles. Correct! Whoa! We started moving again! It would seem this entire lift is, in itself, another puzzle. Put in place to protect- Oh, it's going too fast! I don't believe we're in the clear just yet. This may take a while. Ah, uh, I did have no control of the text. It just went on its own. <laughs> okay, I guess I have to start reading faster. We've stopped- We've stopped again! Another stage of the puzzle? Hmm, indeed. That would appear to be the case. I'll take this one, Professor! All right, but don't overexert yourself. We'll need to work together to solve the rest of this puzzle. Roger that! Same concept again. Ooh, it's a dragon. All right, same thing again. Now if I can just remember how to do this one. Wow, okay, this is actually incredibly easy. <laughs> wow, that's too easy! Let's see if I've proven myself. That was indeed an intriguing puzzle. Up we go! I did it, Professor! You certainly did. Well done, Luke. But... We're still not there yet, are we? Just how far is this lift going to take us? Well, judging by all the stages thus far, whoever put this puzzle in place is certainly keen that we don't reach the top easily. We still can't afford to let our guard down. Read really fast! Round three! Oh, we stopped again! Well then, allow me to take this on... take on this one. All right, let's try this. Oh, oh, what a mess. All right, same thing. It's a sun. I think I fucked that up already. Uh, how do I do this? Okay. Oh, I think I got it now. Boom! These puzzles are too easy! <laughs> All latent fans cry when they're too easy. The answer. That was indeed an intriguing puzzle. Excellent! We've run out of things to say when you beat these puzzles! That was an exceedingly difficult puzzle. Sure. The next stop must be our destination! I think you're probably right, Luke. Well, this is it, Professor. It seems we have arrived at last. It is a beautiful place. This evening breeze is a little chilly. So, 
Is this the storyteller's garden, then? I think that's probably a safe assumption, Luke. Judging by the abundance of water and rose bushes, it's being well taken care of. I'd be inclined to say the tower seems more akin to a castle. Who'd have imagined we'd end up in a beautiful place like this? Let's investigate! So, this really reminds me of Curious Village, because if you beat that game, you go through a tower and you find this house at the very top. It's very reminiscent of that. Also, I love the fact Luke adjusts his hat in the cutscene. But, uh, yeah, anyway. Oh, uh, before we continue, we have to go find some hit coins, of course. <laughs> this would be easier with a stylus. One. Two. Three. There we go. Tower on... Let's go hit this. This building is really something else. I guess this must this part must be the storyteller's house. Estella must have lived here when she was younger. Yes, indeed. This must have been her family her family home. Her family? I wonder if she had any plans to ever come back here. No matter where she goes or what she does, family is family. This will always be her home. I'd say it's highly likely that she would wish to come back here someday. I suppose so, even if her family was only the two of them. The relationship between Espella and her father may well prove to be an important, important clue. Yes, I was thinking the same thing. Huh? What's the matter, Luke? It's nothing. I'm probably seeing things, but for a moment there, I thought I saw something moving at the top of the tower. Sorry, it must have been my imagination. Let's go inside, Professor! Was it your imagination? Leighton thinks otherwise! You might be onto something, little Luke! Anyway, let's go inside. We're going to the child's room. Yeah. Whoa! Oh, cute! This appears to be a child's room. It certainly looks that way. From its condition, I say it hasn't been used for some time. Presumably, it was used by Espella as a child. Right, so this is where Espella grew up. Something pretty big must have happened to make her leave home so young. I wonder how Espella and the storyteller used to get on together. Espella is a young lady of strong conviction and a kind heart. I'm certain that's because she grew up within a fine home envi environment. Was the last one Luke? Oops. In other words, I'm sure she and her father must have spent some quality time here together. Yeah, I have a feeling you're right about that. For Espella, this place must be full of precious memories. I almost feel... I almost feel we're intruding, coming here like this. But Luke, we have no choice if we wish to save Espella. Yes, I suppose that's true. When you put it like that, I guess she wouldn't mind even if she knew. Alright, time to find hit coins! One hit coin. Two hit coins. Ah, ah, ah. Didn't the Count's voice actor pass away recently or was it the puppeteer? It's kind of sad. Alright, hit coin number three! Very good. Let's check out this bed. Oh, look at that. We can zoom in do it. Quakey! Professor, behind that curtain! There's someone there! The mysterious figure turned out to be... Just a doll! Whew, that's a relief! My heart was in my mouth! Spella must have played with this doll as a child. Eh? What's this? Look, Professor, there's a child's picture book here! The title is The First Story! It would appear to be a handmade children's picture book. I wonder if it was written especially for Espella. It may well have been. Evidently, a great deal of loving care has been put into the writing and illustrations. There was a bad witch in the town. All of the carrots in the field disappeared and all the money in the bank was turned into pumpkins. 
the people of the town had to put up with all kinds of mischief from the witch. They didn't know what to do. Then one day, a brave young girl appeared and said to the townsfolk, "When the witch uses witchcraft, she always uses a big stick, doesn't she? So if we take away her stick, we'll be able to stop her." After hearing this, the people of the town set a trap for the witch and managed to capture her. At her trial, the bad witch said this to the people: "Even now, the legendary great witch Bezella is living here in this town. Bezella is the queen of all the witches. She is the one who gives us witches life." The townsfolk. Punished the witch, and peace was restored to the town once more. To this day, Bazella is still hiding somewhere in the town. But the brave townsfolk will not be beaten by the bad witches. That's kind of ominous for a storybook. <laughs> Good goodness, for a children's story. Hmm. Who'd have thought there would be a fairy tale about Bazella? She's a mysterious character, all right. Tell me, Luke, why do you think the author chose to write about Bazella in a children's picture book? Huh? Well, maybe to make that child behave. Something like if you don't do as you're told, Bazella will come and get you. Yes, indeed, that is a possibility. Still, I have to wonder. Why is it that some lonely witch was caught and not the great Bazella herself? Huh. Well, I suppose it is a bit strange. If Bazella herself had been caught, the story could have been brought to a more conclusive ending. Do you think there's some other reason? It's certainly a possibility. I don't suppose there are any other handmade picture books in the room apart from this one. Handmade picture books. Huh. I don't see any. I guess that must be the only one. Which would imply this book has some special significance. I guess so. After all, it is handmade. I bet she really treasured it. Do you think it was the storyteller who wrote this book? The handwriting does seem very similar to that of the story. This book appears to have been written with a touch more care and attention, but I imagine it was the storyteller who wrote it. He must have written it as a gift from father to daughter. That actually seems really thoughtful, even if the story itself is a little scary. I'd like to think I'd like to take this book to a speller. Yes, let's do just that, Luke. We must take good care of it. Yoink! All right, look at this door over here now. I believe we've seen all there is to see here. Let's press on, Luke. Off we go! Wow, this is the complete opposite of the other room we were in. What do you make of this room, Professor? It's not very tidy. This appears to be the very top room of the tower.、Hmm? The parchment lying on the floor there has floor here seems very similar to the type on which the storyteller writes his stories. I think we can say with some certainty that this is the storyteller's room. It's pretty damn messy, huh? This is the storyteller's room. I was imagining something a bit grander, like a throne room of with all kinds of posh decorations. While I agree that it's a little eccentric, it's unmistakably the study of an author. He probably spent all his time in here, continuously writing those stories. The stories. I wonder what Espella thought of it all. Her father writing stories for all the townsfolk. I mean, I wonder if she looked forward to seeing the new stories completed, or if she. The stories were probably a little too mature in content for a young child. I don't imagine the storyteller would have shown Espella many many of them. But in that case, surely she can't have had many opportunities to even talk to her father, 
given how busy he was. I guess that means she was pretty lonely. It must have been hard for her, even knowing how important those stories are for the people of the town. But I don't think it's right. No child should be unable to talk with her father. I absolutely agree, Luke. I believe it will be important in the upcoming trial to have an understanding of Isabella's feeling towards her father. Professor, knowing you, Luke, I'm sure you must have had you must have a lot of things on your mind at the moment. So if there's anything at all that you want to talk about, you tell me, won't you? Of course I will, Professor. I'm always ready to listen, Luke. Now then, shall we start investigating this room? Which we will have to do in the next video because we are now finished with this recording. So I will see you guys later then. Uh, blah blah. I I mess up the the outro. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah. Um. We'll do the investigation in the next video because we are running out of time. So I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.